Hello guys, welcome back. This is more 49ers news and this is the latest on the 49ers training camp, day 7. Before I start, I have a link down in the description below of what I'll be doing for this off-season and regular season of the NFL season. And to keep an eye on 49ers matches, so keep an eye on that as well. I will leave a link down in the description. Have a look and tell me what you think. But I've finished work yet again and I'm here to kick ass for you guys so here we go for day seven of the training camp and here we are yet again si.com forward slash nfl forward slash 49ers news it's by grant cohen look him up grant cohen um great bloke catches all 49ers of training camp to anything he gets hands on on daily very good uh, he's a very good um uh, media bloke <laughs> on the 49ers so the good and not so good from day seven of the 49ers training camp breaking down the, the best and the worst performances from day seven of the 49ers training camp so here we go here's what stood out day seven the good number one defensive end eric armstead stop running back trey sermon for no gain on the second play of practice then beat mike uh McGlinchke uh, to sack Jimmy G on the third play. Armstead has been the 49ers best defensive line in camp, mostly because he has been the, uh, the healthiest one yet. Number two, defensive tackle uh, Kevin Givens broke into the backfield and stopped uh, Sermon for a three-yard loss on the fourth play of the practice when the starters were facing the start. Uh, when the starters were facing the starters, Givens is a starting caliber player in the NFL and a good one too. That's very good. Number three, defensive tackle. Uh, Maurice Hurst uh, stopped running back Hasty for a three yard loss and then stopped Trey Lance for a, a three yard loss on a zone red okay Hurst already looks much better than former 49ers first round pick uh, Solomon Thomas who's now on the Raiders number four strong safety uh, Tavan Wilson um, he, um, he started uh, every practice at strong safety and played well. Today he broke up a pass intended for George Kittle during a one-on-one -on -one drills in the red zone, then nearly intercepted a pass from Jimmy G during the 11-on-11s. 11 if uh, Jack Tart never recovers from his turf toe injury, Wilson will replace him with a starting lineup. He made two nice stops against Run yesterday. Okay. Number five, tight end Ross Dewey made a safety form in his... Uh, on his face during one on ones and caught a 40, 45 yard pass from Trey Lance during 11 on 11s. The 49ers defense can't stop Dewey. No uh, exclamation there. Number six tight end Jordan Matthews uh, caught a 10 yard touchdown pass in the red zone, but made a key block on a 10 yard touchdown run by Wayne Gilman. Matthews looks like a natural tight end. He played wide receiver uh, until this year. Number seven, quarterback Nate Sudfield completed both of his passes, a 15-yarder to Trent Sheffield during a dig route and another 15-yarder to Brandon I running the same route. Sudfield looks like a quality backup. Well, that's good with the goods. Now, the not-so-good, so here we go. Defensive tackle, uh, Javon Kinlaw. Uh, removed himself from a pass rushing drill and spent 10 minutes squatting and uh, squatting down and starting a grass while the rest of the teammates worked on their craft. Uh, bizarre, really. Then Kinlaw didn't uh, participate in 11 on, on 11s either. He just watched from the sideline. Kinlaw was supposed to take a big leap forward this offseason, but he can't take a leap if he doesn't work. Well, that's terrible. And yet again, as I keep saying on these fucking videos, number two, not doing so good, Nick Bosa. Uh, missed practice with his second maintenance day of camp. So in one week, he's taken two days completely off, even though he hasn't participated in any physical competition. Uh, no one-on-ones, no 11-on-11s either, which suggests the little physical activity he's doing is causing soreness in his surgery, repaired knee. Not great. This is what I'm saying, guys. I'll talk about that more later. Number three, defensive end, uh, Samson uh, Ibukman. Uh, uh, Missed yet another practice about the 49ers calling soreness in his legs. Sounds like it's worse than soreness. Okay. Uh, another, uh, number three, defensive end, uh, Samson Ibukman. 
Oh, no, I did that one. Uh, number four, uh, defensive tackle uh, Mike McGinley gave up a sack to Armstead, who's not an edge rusher. He's an uh, interior rusher. Uh, and Mike can't block any type of rusher on pl uh, pass plays. He's a running blocking specialist who will struggle in pass protection no matter what he weighs. Not his fault. That's what he is. It's the 49ers' fault for drafting him with a top 10 pick. Great. Um, number five, wide receiver Debo Samuel. Returned to practice after missing Tuesday with a grind tightness and dropped a pass. Also committed a holding penalty. Number six, guard Aaron Banks. Still hasn't played with starters. Today, uh, Colton McCavish was the starting right guard and McCavish stinks, which shows you what the 49ers currently thinks of Banks. He committed a false start with the f second sh uh, stringers during the 11s on 11s. And number seven, quarterback Josh Rosen. Completed one of three pass attempts. His body language does not not express confidence. He's... Uh, he's look like wants to be he wants to be somewhere else. He's better step up, or he will spend the rest of his twenties playing tennis in a country club. Bloody hell! But yet again, forget all of that, right? Forget Aaron Banks, Dubo Samuel, Mike McGlinchey, like all these guys. You know what I mean? We have their up days, we have their off days. That's fine. I understand. You know what I mean? This is why the off season's here. This is why we get him going, get him kicking in, done. I keep saying on every single one of these fucking videos, where is Nick Bosa standing? He's supposed to be, he's supposed to be our main guy. Right there in the middle, tackling, sacking. What is this guy doing? Seriously, what's this guy doing? I can't see... <sighs> He needs to do something off season, and if he doesn't, he needs to do something regular season. But I cannot see this guy continue with us for a whole season. I just can't see it. I really can't. If his ACL is that torn, get him out. Get him out. Bring in a replacement or something, or do something. Nick Bosa is your heavy-handed man in the middle of everything. I don't understand what's going on. I know he's sore. I know he's injured. I know that he's very slowly trying to get to that healthy spot. Don't, I don't care how long it takes. Like if if they've been in camp for sixty minutes to ninety minutes to two hours, three hours. This guy, this bloke ain't done nothing. So what will he do? Well, they'll put more pressure on him on off season, get him battered and bruised, and say, "Listen, I need a couple of weeks off here, one week off there, that year, whatever." Blah blah blah. To get him kick ass ready for the regular season, or will they just not let him do off season and get him kicking ass for the regular until he fucks up and until his body's broken or whatever? I don't know what's going on, but it ain't looking good for this uh, for season so far. Nick Bosa not doing nothing. Um, yeah, but that's it. Uh, leave a comment, guys. Tell me what you think about the article. Tell me what you think about Nick Bosa. Tell me everything. Leave your comments down below, guys. Um, thank you very much for the 40 subscribers. Really fortunate, humble, and appreciated that you guys subscribed. And if you're new, subscribe. So there's a lot, uh, lot more 49ers news and uh, NFL news, reactions, reviews of all sorts, and a lot of gaming streamers as well. So keep your eyes out for that. And, um, yeah, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you guys uh, on the next video.